Welcome everyone. In this session, we are going to discuss some basic aspects of um, generator modeling for dynamic model assessment um, or um, performing any grid interconnection studies. So the very first part of uh, performing the grid interconnection studies is to develop the model of the power plant itself for which this particular uh, studies is being done. So when we talk about this grid interconnection studies, we are interested in two aspects of uh, uh, grid interconnection. The first aspect is, let's say if we have a power plant and it is connected to say some kind of grid here, we have a very big grid here, It is uh, the power plant is connected. So the first aspect is how this power plant is going to impact your grid so the power which will be flowing through this grid is going to impact the overall power flow through this uh, power system or this electrical grid so this is what we want to know similarly if the fault is initiated on any of the transmission line close to this network how this plant is going to respond in case of that so these kind of things so this is first and uh, also so what kind of short circuit levels or how the short circuit levels are going to change when this, once this plant is connected. And this kind of study is done usually for two kind of scenarios. One is the existing year or the uh, year in which the plant is expected to be commissioned and the ultimate year. So the ultimate or the final year where this uh, plant uh, is going to uh, have the impact so these two things. and the other thing is for the same power plant how this grid is going to impact this power plant so here we are more interested in the the dynamic aspect of the uh, this particular power plant so we have a grid this uh, grid can be strong this grid can be weak so depending upon the strength of the grid your plant is your plant models are going to behave accordingly so if you have a very strong grid the impact because uh, we are talking about here uh, the typical kind of uh, um, especially for the uh, renewables what happens is that the typical uh, kind of controllers are the grid following right a uh, uh, grid following uh, type of controllers so they depend on or they depend on pll or the phase lock loop in order to perform so if you have a good waveform available from the grid, grid side uh, your response from the grid is going to be better but if uh, your grid is a weak grid and the waveform which is being seen by this particular plant uh, is uh, distorted uh, it cannot lock to that uh, phase of that particular waveform as a result we are going to get instability or uh, the inverter or the plant is not going to behave as expected so uh, for this particular uh, session we are interested in the development of uh, uh, or the modeling of the plant for this kind of setup Now the, this modeling can be uh, done for the synchronous generator as well as the renewable generator. So why do we need to do this particular kind of modeling for the synchronous generator? Specifically, if you want to identify what is the critical flaring time and you are more interested in the aspect of the generator itself, how a particular generator or the models within that generator are going to react uh, if you have a particular type of grid so what we do is uh, how do we model this uh, is something like this so we model a generator this uh, generator is going to be connected to your low voltage bus right so if we go here so what we are going to see here is this your this is your generator bus so your generator bus is going to be something like 11 kV going all the way to 
34.5 or um, something kb like this so this is going to be your generator bus and then since this is the generation voltage you have to step up it to your transmission voltage for that purpose we are going to have a step up transformer so for these particular type of step up transformers uh, your impedance uh, will vary from something like so your x is going to be something around typically 12 to 16 percent so usually this kind of uh, impedances are used and uh, r your r is going to be something around 0.5 percent to 0. 6%. So this is the typical values used. So I'm telling I mean uh, you are going to have these values available but in case if these values are not available and you are doing some uh, generic kind of a study so you can use these kind of limits uh, for that purpose. So moving on then we are going to have uh, the interconnection system. So what is the interconnection system? Uh, this can be the cable connected to the point of connection or this can be your uh, high voltage or extra high voltage connection. So you model that connection for that connection all you need is your R, X and B values. So once you are done, done with this and this is are your uh, since these are your transmission voltages these can be something like 132 kV or 220 kV or 500 kV, 380 kV, uh, whatever it is. And then uh, the last part is this part. So what is this is basically this is your infinite grid which we want to model. So this is how we model our infinite grid. So this is something which is very strong and here what we need to do is we need to model the aspect of the grid, the strength of the grid. So what will be the strength of the grid? How much short circuit contribution is coming from the grid towards this plant side which can be given in the form of your uh, two things. The first thing is the short circuit ratio and your x pi r of the grid. So more short circuit ratio will mean that you have more strength in the system. The lower short circuit ratio will mean that you have less strength in the system. So by varying the strength and X by R of the system, you can replicate different kind of uh, uh, grid, um, uh, I mean, uh, 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 grid uh, circumstances or grid scenarios. And for each, you, you can uh, check these values. Now, for this particular SCR and for this XR, you are basically what you are doing is you are trying to calculate your said source. So when, when we talk about so your source impedance. So what is going to be your source impedance? This source impedance will depend upon this value of the SCR and X by R and which we are going to see. So the, the whole point of uh, explaining this is uh, the importance of this Z source and how to calculate these values from your SCR value and X by R value so that you can replicate different connections of the grid or different uh, mm, uh, scenarios or uh, conditions of the grid. So and what is this? Uh, I mean uh, you can model uh, one additional bus uh, within this. This can be used for creating the fault. So here if you are uh, interested in uh, carrying out the fault at different um, uh, distances from your point of interconnection. So you can have this uh, um, value and you can distribute your ZS between two points here and here. So this is going to be your distance into Z source and this can be your 1 minus distance into Z source. So let's say you want to go with the 90% of your Z source. So this means that the fault is uh, approximately 10% of the value. So if you have a 100 kilometer line, so this means that uh, fault is at somewhere 10 kilometers from your uh, point of connection. So, so this way, uh, I mean, you can uh, model different values of your uh, source impedance and uh, the distance between your main grid and your generator. So now moving on to the inverter based. Inverter based uh, modeling is something similar to what we have done for the synchronous generator. So in this case you are going to have your renewable generator uh, which will be basically the combination or sum of all the uh, generation or whole power plant. So let's say if you have 
1.5 kVA or 1.5 mVA uh, one wind turbine and you have 99 uh, wind turbines of the similar kind so what you need to do is it will be the bulk or the total 99 multiplied by 1.5 mVA of the wind turbine and then it will be connected to your some low voltage and in this case what are your low voltages uh, the low voltages in this case are typically something like 0.69 kV or 0.7 kV and in some cases 1 kV as well so depending upon what is your low voltage side you are going to model the and then you are going to have a step up transformer uh, which is going to step up your voltages from your low voltage to your medium voltage or your collector system voltage so this this will be basically your collector system voltage so your medium voltage and medium voltage can be something like 33 kV or 34.5 kV it can also be 25 kV so depending upon your system or the type of data you have based on this you are going to give this value and then this is going to be connected uh, to a collector so this part sums up so it is basically the equivalent of all the uh, collector system within your system so because uh, your plant will be something like this you so you have one wind turbine here and then this is node and then there is going to be uh, then there is going to be a uh, one wind turbine so there is going to be a one wind turbine here and then connected here one wind turbine here and maybe one here and then like this and then there is another collector system going connecting to multiple wind turbines so you might have uh, a system something similar to this so this is basically the aggregation of all these collector system into one so you model this and uh, by the way if you want further details on this you can get the details from WCC. So WCC has defined how to model the equivalent of this uh, system. You can go there and check this. Then you are going to have your station transformer and this station transformer is again going to be connected to your grid and this transmission line in between is going to show you your Z source and in the same way what we can do here is that we can model one more additional bus which can be my fault bus so here this was my medium voltage then it is uh, going all the way to my interconnection voltage which can be 132 kV or 220 kV or 500 kV depending upon the type of plant we have and once again my Z source will be divided into two Z source this part can be termed as 1 minus T and this part can be termed as D so that depending upon the uh, uh, distance of the fault from your point of interconnection you can change this D accordingly in order to get your um, particular source impedance so now how this source impedance is calculated from your SCR value and X by R value which is typically provided uh, uh, by your utility or your utility might say that uh, there are different values of SCR and X by uh, R for which you want these values so you can get these values uh, with the help of these equations so if you see this equation first of all uh, uh, you need to know what is your plant maximum capacity so let's say if I have a renewable plant of say uh, 200 megawatt so here my P max becomes 200 megawatt right so this becomes 200 then I give my base voltage and then the SCR value this is going to give me my uh, fault MVA once I have my fault MVA I'm simply going to divide my uh, fault MVA by 1 in order to get ZS once I have this ZS value all I need to do is I need to divide this by 1 plus under root of X by R square to get RS and then multiply this RS by X by R in order to get ZS so once I do this I am going to get my RS and XS which basically I need here to be modeled here in this case and to give you an example so we are taking a, a very simple example let's assume that the given X by R for uh, a particular plant or the your utility has told you that uh, for uh, performing this dynamic model assessment or the performance of your gen, uh, 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 plant model what you need to do is you need to consider SCR of 3 and X by R of 3 
whereas your plant capacity is 33.6 and your S base is 100 MBA, which is typically considered when you are doing uh, these kind of studies. So first of all, we need to calculate SMVA and how we can calculate this SMVA. This is going to be simple. All I need to do is I need to divide 33.6 by 100 and then multiply it by SCR value, which is basically 3 and I am going to end up with this value. So once I have this value, so in order to calculate this value, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this value by one. So once I do this, I'm going to end up with this value. And then all I need to do is I need to take my SCR. So here this becomes that source. I simply divide one plus my X by R value in this case is three, three square under root. And when I'm going to solve this, I'm going to get 0.331 and in the same way uh, once I take this uh, RS value and multiply it by 3 I'm going to get my X so in this way this is how you model this value so what you are going to do is from there you are going to get this R and X value all you need to do is you know you need to go in your uh, PSSC if you're using PSSC or if you're using Dixieland or using uh, I mean any kind of software because uh, this PSSC and Dixieland can take values in per unit so if you are working with the per unit PSSC then you need all you need to do is you need to just simply copy and paste these values here in your R and X tag but if you are using Dixieland or PSCAD where you need to provide uh, values in the form of uh, you say and the actual values so for the actual values what you need to do is you need to calculate z base and your z base is going to be your kv square divided by your s base 